What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego back with some boxing news. Former WBC middleweight champion Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is possibly going to debut next year in the super middleweight division of 168 pounds. As you guys know, in his last fight, September 15th, he lost via decision to Sergio Martinez. It was then revealed after the fight that he tested positive for marijuana in his system and now faces at least six months suspension from the sport from the Nevada State Athletic Commission. When he returns, he says he wants a rematch with Martinez, but if Martinez decides to do something else, Chavez is going to move up to 168 pounds and said he has his eyes and his sights set on Andre Ward. That would be the ultimate target at 168 pounds. Chavez is a long-time trainer. Freddie Roach has often called for Chavez Jr. to move up, saying that he has to resort to starving himself to make the middleweight limit of 160 pounds. He makes the weight, but as you guys know, a lot of times he rehydrates 15 to 22 pounds. The unofficial weight for the Sergio Martinez fight was 192 pounds. So that's pretty ridiculous. Chavez Jr. is fighting a guy who weighs 160 fight night or close to it, and he's weighing 192 pounds himself. Either way, Chavez Jr. said, I would like the rematch. I think it would be a good fight. If not, I'll go up to 168, and I'll develop to my full potential, and I will be physically complete. So, as far as my thoughts, um, as far as the fight with Chavez Jr. and Andre Ward, Andre beats him hands down. Um, Andre is too technical. And for the most part, Chavez Jr., I'm not saying he has no skill, no talent, because it looks like he has a chin, and, and he does work the body. However... A lot of times he relies on brute force and the fact that he's bigger than most of his opponents at 160 and he's able to bully them, corner them, and kind of go to work and they can't keep him off from people like Andy Lee. But when you get to Andre Ward, that's a different monster. That's a completely different beast because he's a technical fighter and he's fought hard punchers like Carl Froch and he knows how to neutralize them. He's fought taller people and bigger people like Chad Dawson, even though Chad Dawson was possibly weight drain trying to make 168 it's still he's too technical and if Sergio Martinez who is a small 160 um, worked him just from pure boxing skill level and footwork then a bigger person like Andre Ward who is even more of a technical boxer and more of a, a fighter who knows how to adapt I don't see Chavez Jr. beating him um, then you got people like Kelly Pavlik. I would like to see a Kelly Pavlik and Chavez Jr. fight just because Kelly Pavlik's on his comeback trail. Um, but again, Cal Kelly Pavlik's a better boxer than Chavez Jr. in terms of technique. Um, you got guys like Carl Froch. Carl Froch, he has a chin. He has a granted chin as well. So I don't know how Chavez Jr., his power would transition, and I don't know how his chin is in comparison to guys I mean we've seen how it is against guys who are 160 but how would it be against a person like Carl Froch who hits harder who stopped Butte um, we'll see Chavez Jr. possibly going up to super middleweight and in other boxing news former IBO cruiserweight champion Antonio Tarver he has protested to the California State Athletic Commission his one-year ban however that protest was not heard, and the California State Athletic Commission has chose to go forth with the one-year ban because he tested positive for steroids after his bout with Latif Coyote in June. And Antonio Tarver, he's 43 years old. He said to ESPN.com, I am really surprised that they didn't shorten the suspension. I can't explain why it was in my system because I don't know why it was in my system, but I know I've never taken any steroids. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um... So that's some other boxing news. Antonio Tarver, it looks like he will be suspended for a year. They had no mercy. Um, my personal thoughts, I think he did steroids. It's As a professional athlete, you have to be responsible for what you're consuming, what goes in your body. Um, as far as these, these athletes saying that, oh, there was marijuana in my eye drops, or they fed me weed brownies and steroid brownies and all kinds of stuff, like, I don't buy it. Um, Again, you're a professional, you're an adult, you're not a toddler. It's not so like someone has to feed you and you don't know the nutritional content of what you're eating um, or you don't question it. So I really don't buy when they're acting shocked like, oh, I didn't know I was taking steroids. I, I just was taking them. Like, I, I really don't buy it. I have a hard time fathoming that someone who's, who's a grown man over 40 doesn't know what's going into his body. Plus, I've never done steroids myself, but... 
have you ever taken creatine if you even take creatine it does things to your body um like accelerate your heart rate um help with strength gains and stuff so just imagine steroids and you have no knowledge that something is in your body is in your system as in giving you increased stamina speed or or whatever strength whatever is doing for your body because steroids does ha impact people differently um like i said even if you take creatine you could probably feel that there's some level of change in your body because you are in essence altering things that um you're not naturally producing that creatine it's a supplement so i can only imagine if you're taking steroids um you would feel some level of impact some level of change and i just have a hard time buying a grown man doesn't know what he's consuming especially when he's a professional athlete you know you get tested and and furthermore who is feeding you these things like if you have a team behind you so your trainer freddie roach you have alex ariza or whoever as your conditioning coach what are they giving you it seems like you have the wrong team if that's the situation if you have a team and they're giving you illegal substances unbeknownst to you and it's going to possibly get you banned um get you fined get you like tar and feathered in the league and blackballed i mean you have to consider your team at that point like what kind of team do you have if they don't have your best interest at heart if they're willing to do something like cheat and not tell you it just either way you slice it it still falls somehow on the fighter those are my take that's what i think let me know what you guys think make sure you subscribe and comment and or hate either way it doesn't matter i'm still getting the views until next video it's ego signing off